Here are three possible reasons for why God is allowing you to keep struggling with a reoccurring sin. Number one, God may be allowing you to struggle with a reoccurring sin to point out a deeper issue that you're not yet aware of. According to Proverbs 20 verse 5, the human heart is like deep waters and it takes a lot of wisdom and insight to draw out what is lying beneath the surface. Sometimes we have a deep heart issue that can't be seen by us until God allows a bigger issue on the surface to occur that's really pointing to that thing beneath the surface. Our sinful actions are never really the root problem. Sin is really a symptom of our heart's condition. When we're walking closely to Jesus and we're being sanctified by the Spirit, we're going to be sinning less and less the closer we are to Him. But on the other side, when we're drifting from Christ or our heart is wounded and we're running to sin for comfort, we're going to be sinning more and more. As John Owen wrote in his book called Of the Mortification of Sin in Believers, that God does sometimes leave even those of his own under the perplexing power at least of some lust or sin to correct them for former sins, negligence, and folly, I no way doubt. Examine your heart and ways. What was the state and condition of your soul before you fell into the entanglement of that sin which now you so complain of? Have you been negligent in duties? Have you lived inordinately to yourself? Is there the guilt of any great sin lying upon you unrepented of? A new sin may be permitted as well as a new affliction sent to bring an old sin to remembrance." it's possible this reoccurring sin is actually pointing back to something even older than this struggle you have been dealing with for so long. Ask God what is behind this reoccurring sin. Is it fear of abandonment, a lack of love, a desire to ease the guilt of a sin you committed years ago? Pray Isaiah 63 verse 17. O Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our heart so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Ask God to draw out the deep places in your heart that may be the true reason for why you are still struggling with this reoccurring sin. Number two, God may be allowing you to keep struggling with a reoccurring sin if you're depending on the power of fear rather than on the power of God's love for you for deliverance. The motive for why we're trying to stop a particular reoccurring sin is actually going to influence our ability to resist that sin or not. The fear of punishment in the long run is not a strong enough motivation to help us overcome the strong allure of sin. As John Owen also wrote in his book called Of the Mortification of Sin in Believers, such a man who opposes nothing to the seduction of sin and lust in his heart, but fear of shame among men or hell from God, is sufficiently resolved to do the sin if there were no punishment attending it, which what it differs from living in the practice of sin I know not. Now if a man be so under the power of his lust that he has nothing but law to oppose it with, if he cannot fight against it with the gospel weapons, but deals with it altogether with hell and judgment, which are the proper arms of the law, it is most evident that sin has possessed itself of his will and affections to a very great prevalency and conquest. Such a person has cast off, as to the particular sin spoken of, the conduct of renewing grace, and is kept from ruin only by restraining grace. And so far is he fallen from grace and returned under the power of the law. Restraining grace is the reason our world has not completely destroyed itself. The fear of our civil laws and the conscience God has put in the heart of every human, saved or not, allows this world to go on. But renewing grace is the gift that Christians have received through the gospel. Now we can choose to act morally not only out of fear of punishment that restrains us, but rather out of our love for God and people. When Joseph was being tempted by Potiphar's wife, he focused most on his relationship with God, not the fear of punishment. In Genesis 39 verse 9 he states, How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? 
2 Corinthians 5.14 says, For Christ's love compels us. 1 John 4.17-19 explains, By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. The power of fear is not as strong as the power of love. If you are trying to resist this reoccurring sin out of fear, rather than out of the power of Christ's love for you, you will keep struggling. Our relationship with God and his love for us must be the motivation for our warfare against sin. And number three, God's final solution is not your perfect obedience. God's final solution is based upon Christ's perfect obedience. When it comes down to it, the main reason God doesn't always take away our reoccurring sin in our life is because the gospel isn't dependent upon our perfect obedience. Rather, the gospel is dependent upon Jesus' perfect obedience. Yes, God does command us to obey. He wants us to obey. But we're not saved because of our perfect obedience. Rather, our obedience flows out of the free grace that God gives us through Jesus Christ. We're saved because Jesus lived perfectly. He obeyed God even to the point of death on the cross. So again, our salvation is not based upon our perfect obedience. Rather, because we are saved by grace, because of what Jesus has done, now we're given the ability to obey him. One day, you and I will no longer struggle with sin if we're Christians. God's going to make us perfect and glorify our bodies. But in the meantime, when we continue to fall to certain sins, God calls us to keep repenting, to keep fighting, and to keep depending on God's grace through Jesus Christ. As 2 Corinthians 12 verses 8 through 9 state, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Here's a playlist of other videos I've done on this topic of reoccurring sin. I highly encourage you to watch those videos if you want to keep learning with me about this really important topic. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep in touch with me every time I post a new video, which I do at least three times a week. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.